I am so excited today. Oh my goodness, you all know why I'm excited very soon. Pretty soon, you see that lady over there? Ooh, bad. That's why I'm excited. I'm today. Dr. Yolanda Shields yeah. and have been uh, really focused on where God had me and in the space of education. You know, Dr. Fumi, I am so glad to be with you. I'm, I'm glad to say Dr. Doctor. That was it. And then the future of what? Those two things wrapped me up. I want to kind of, uh, this is where you, what you do merge with what I do in psychiatry, mm -hmm. because I can testify to what you just said now, because a lot of my patients, many of them were working in the service industry. And so when they got sent home, they had to come up with things. People were doing Uber, people were just, they just had to come up yes. with things. And now that everything, the market is opening up, they finally now, in fact, as a matter of fact, many of them come back to me and say, you know what? Yes, I did that. I was at that restaurant for 11 years. I want to go back. Now I see my possibilities. I see other things that I could do. I actually had some that went back and went back home. Like, no, we're not going to take the insult from anybody. People are just insulting. And I said, well, <laughs> is the insult you've been taking for 15 years? What changed? Right. What suddenly changed? And what changed for them was now they realize the gig economy. They realize that they can actually make money. They can not only just make money, they can also be happy with what they choose. Talk mm -hmm. to us about that. Yes. They can control the amount of time they spend working. One of the companies that I work with during the pandemic, I helped them transition their staff home. And even we saw it even with big corporations, they transition staff home to work. Then I work with them to transition them back to the office. And then they realize out of all of these hundreds of people that we've sent home, not everybody needs to come back. <laughs> Some of these positions can actually be done from home and we don't need all this real estate. The same for the individual say, oh, they've been working me so many hours and I'm stressed out, I'm depressed. I don't really even like what I'm doing. People start having time to really think through that and say, I don't want that anymore. I don't want to go back. Let me figure out why I got this time to work through it, figure out what am I passionate about that I can do and make money and take care of my family wow. and not be working 80 hours a week. Now, it is my desire that a lot of corporate leaders are going to watch and listen to this because this is what I'm finding out in my area of expertise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, many of the, uh, the staffing did extraordinarily well while working at home. Even there are some departments where when they were in the office, they were barely making 45% of their goal for the year. Mm -hmm. But the minute they transitioned home, people un understood that this was, oh my God, they had opportunities to be able to, they were more flexible, right? Exactly. So because of that, they were happier mm -hmm. and they did their work and even exceeded what they were what, what they were told to do because they did not want to miss out on that opportunity. And because of that, you now have corporations who were making for barely 45% of their goal. Now they were hitting 90, 95 and they did that for two years and all of a sudden now you want to transition them back. So yeah. can you talk to organizations yes. like that? Please talk to organizations like that because exactly. they need to look at, you know, some, there are some people in that organization structure who just feels like I'm going back to the office so you have to go back. But they're not really looking at their bottom line. The fact that they make more money with right. these people at home Exactly. To, please, can you just talk to America? Yes, talk absolutely. To, talk to the global world on this one. 
Absolutely. I think top leaders need to think about not across the board, just because you feel like it's time to come back doesn't make sense productivity wise. If the productivity of those staff were increased while they were at home in certain positions, then figure out what makes sense. If you want to make sure that you still have a community with those staff, you can do that by having people come in once a month to gather for a meeting and to connect. Or if you have new team members, I did this with a company. They said, what about when new people come? How do they connect if every if the majority of the people are working from home? I said, with all the technology that we have, it can be done and you can figure out a time of the month that it's the time that you're onboarding all of your new staff, that that is the date that you bring everybody in to do your fully full staff meeting so that they can meet them, connect with them in person, and then they can connect better offline or on an online platform. But, but realizing that not just because you want them in the office, doesn't mean that it makes sense business-wise. What is your business strategy? What are you really wanting to see? What 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 monies are you, revenue goals are you looking at? And did you see that while they were at home working That's right. That's right. and saw more as you just said? And then make it make sense. Some people were just doing it across the board. Everybody come, come back. Yeah. And I'm like, right. that doesn't make sense. But a lot of companies are saying, we're paying a lot for this real estate. And we really don't need it. Yes. So let's figure out which staff, let's look at our numbers when they went home, where is the productivity level high? Where does it make sense based on what they do that they can do it from anywhere? Because some people's like, I'm going to work from Mexico. I'm going to work mm -hmm. from That's Africa. Right. I'm going to work in a different That's country. Right. That's right. And I think you're going to get more work from people when you allow them to figure out what is the best place for them to work. I think because we've always done it, like that doesn't mean that it, it that it's still working. That's we right. we rode horses for a long time, but then we came up with the cars. We didn't like say, oh no, we're gonna still make people do this, That's even right. though we had something new. And I, I think even universities and businesses that was a resistant to online and and doing online stuff. Yes. And now they know that it works. Yes. Um, let me ask you a question. Um, because I know this is your area of expertise. Mm -hmm. What are the what is what are the reasons for this resistance that some of these corporations are getting and are insisting that some I, I look at some of my patients who actually have come up come out of COVID with anxiety, yeah, social phobia and things yeah. like that, that they don't really want to go into a place of work because they have this, they have that phobia about COVID, they have phobia about all kinds of sorts of things. And now the thought of going back is actually making them worse. So what are the resistance that you are seeing or hearing from organizations that you're working with? What is, what is that resistance about? Why are they insisting? For those who are insisting, I don't care what you do, come back to work. What is that, where is that resistance coming from? I believe, it is a lack of confidence in who they've hired and a control issue. Mm. They want to control. People think if they can see somebody, they're going to get more work out of them, mm. which is not true. But if you have an issue with micromanaging and controlling yeah. your environment instead of hiring people that you trust and allow them to do the work that you've hired them to do, I think a lot of leaders struggle with delegating mm. and, and feeling like they have to micromanage people in order to get work out of them. And, and I think it's more of that leadership issue than the person that they're trying to make come back to the office. Mm. And, and I say, hire people. If you're going to hire people because you feel like they have the skills to do the job, let them do the job, whether it's in office or out of office. But I really believe it's a, it's a control issue with some leaders they feel like if they see people, they're going to get more work out of. And, and if they look at their numbers, and if they look at what happened during the pandemic, they'll see the opposite. But I, I feel like a lot of it is wanting to control their environment mm. and wanting to control people. Yeah. So talk to me about the gig community. What is if, okay, so in psychiatry, we say, well, symptoms, right? You have a symptom and you have signs and symptoms. 
So I'm thinking the geek community have, there's something about the geek community that make them geek, that you can call them, these are the geek communities. Because those who are watching or listening now, some might be just sitting back and say, am I part of this? What, you know, what makes me part of this? How do I even know? How can I identify if mm -hmm. I am part of the geek community? They might be sitting down, not even knowing what's next for them. But if we can define what it looks like, the geek community, what does that look like? What do they do? Who are this? Who, what mm -hmm. is this community about? Can you define them for us so that people who are watching or listening can say, oh, maybe I can't identify, or maybe my son, my daughter, or somebody that my loved one can identify. So talk to us, who are this, what is this community made of? Yes. So I would say the gig community is those that may be working a full-time job. For instance, they may be a engineer and but they love music. Mm. But they spend their full-time job kind of working this, but their passion is really over here with mm. the music. The same with someone that maybe, what you see a lot of times, even in hospitality, restaurants, hotels, mm. working in uh, anything that's like in the hospitality sector, yeah. typically mm. probably about, 60 to 70% of those are, just think about Hollywood. All of those people have worked in restaurants on the side yes, to yes. make money, but their yes. true yes. gig was really getting into the entertainment industry, yes. but they had to do this until this kind of caught on. Yes. And so I think that community of those that know what they're passionate about, but they haven't been able to get it to a place where they can do it full time. So they're mm -hmm. doing it on the side until they can roll into a full time. So what you see is, a lot of times these people are meeting up in uh, um, co-working spaces. You're gonna find a lot of side gig people mm. uh, because they, they're not at the point where they can go get a big office, but they need to be around creative people. So they'll meet up in places like that. Go to some Starbucks and, and some of those other coffee shops mm. and just look around. Mm. A lot of those people are your yes. side gig, gig people that have this gift that they're really passionate about, but they haven't gotten into a place where they can make a living off of it. So they got to keep that other job on the side to be able to take care of their family, but they're passionate about this other thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I see a lot of graphic designers. I think about even all these platforms that support freelancers, yes. like Fiverr. A lot of those people that are even in the Fiverr and sharing their gifts on Fiverr are side giggers. Because yes. a lot of them have mm. other jobs, but they took their gift of whether it's grant writing, I, I don't want to do it for a company. I just yeah. want to do it on the side. And so they put that skill up on different platforms so people can call on them to do it. A plumber that mm. working another job and say, I want to do this on my own. So I want to start out like getting maybe one or two clients handyman that want to come to your house and fix little things. And so you begin to see that with people like that. But a lot of the people in the creative, uh, uh, the creative sector, a lot of times they are in the gig economy because they have not made it. I used to tell some of the, even people that I knew were singers that had made, I'm like, you need to keep a job over here. <laughs> keep doing, your, <laughs> keep doing your, your, your singing on the side That's and right. make it. So that you can take care of your family, it's gonna get. But if you put the work in with that side gig, it's gonna come. What happens is people get frustrated because it's not moving fast enough for them. Yes, they leave it and they don't get to that place where they can launch it out. Like we've done, we yes. we've worked for companies. We've had our stuff on the side, and then it got to a place where we can. It's hard work. You got to do That's the work. Right. That's and then we right. We got to a place where we could start doing it full time. But That's right. We've all worked for companies, and but we knew. Uh -uh. This I'm doing this right now, but really, this is really what I want to be doing. Wow. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm coming back to this. So you've talked a little bit about, talked some more about this. Yeah, and yeah. hopefully you get to expand on it some other yeah. time again. Mm -hmm. 